Morning guys, welcome back to Gaz's Koi Pond. We are in the process of continuing with the filtration system. Uh, got a few little bits and bats, some more parts I need to go out and pick up very shortly. Um, a couple of other little things to show you that we've got done. I don't know if I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it on my uh, last videos on the mini pond, uh, the little waterfall system had to had. I think it must have frozen in the winter having it running and then cracked the actual casing so I managed to mend that give the filters a clean sort of uh, general you know just a general maintenance you don't need to see it again because obviously it was a case you've seen it before pretty much rinse and repeat filters out clean them out back in again clean the windows mended the uh, overflow system or the little waterfall system but uh, this is what I'm on with right now. I've got a few bits and bats to go pick up, a few parts that I need to pick up to make it, and a little minor alteration I'm going to make on it myself as well. So, bear me one second. Yeah, this is what we've got. We have a retro bottom drain. Um, just been having a quick look at this to see if I could manufacture it into a slow slung profile which is this one there um, first of all big shout out to uh, Skegness Pond Supplies um, links will be down in the description and there will also be a small little uh, advertisement logo of uh, Daz or Darren Shelton's company coming up around about here now Um, right, so basically I picked up a retro button drain from Daz, he was kind enough to send me one out and get me one sorted out. Um, we've got the, the everyday kit and the fittings and all the bits and bats that all come with, but unfortunately I didn't get the low profile kit. So what I'm thinking of doing is making a low profile kit myself, because it ended there. It can't be that hard. It's only uh, a 90, mm, whatever that is. I think it's a 45, two 45s, a 90 bend, a small section of pipe, and a hose tail. I won't be using the hose tail because I will be connecting it straight into the main piece of pipe that I'm going to be using to go across the bottom of the pond and then up from the side of the pond and across and into the shed for the feed with obviously the pump somewhere and along that line. So what I'm in the process of doing at the moment is, is the dreaded task of filling up the stones. Uh, don't mind this. Uh, this is from Dan, next to Albert one to me. Good man, pick me up a pack of PTFE tape, tower of tent. Thank you very much Dan, much appreciated mate. I'll sort you out. Um, all I've done to alter this is make it so that I can um, use it myself and what I will be doing is making my own slow, low slung profile at the end of the day it's a piece of pipe that pushes in like that so then we need to cut that off and we need to add on a 90 I then need to go out and pick up two 45s a small section of pipe and a 45 so you've got a 45 there, a small section of 5, 45 to the elbow. So I have some of these, we already know. Um, I have a small section of 5. And basically all I will be doing is dropping that in there, backing that up tight. And I think if we bang a bit of solvent weld around there, 
then I will be able to just unscrew this as and when I need to do and I'll be able to take that top section off and remove it this is just a piece of pipe I've just pushed this on that's to go into the the first drum so just a piece of pipe exaggerated obviously elbow on won't be that long obviously uh, elbow on small section of pipe again just between the two joints there 45 another slightly longer section of pipe another 45 and then my pipe going across to my pump and then from a pump it will be uh, delivered to the filter so i'm going to get these the annoying task of trying to get all these little stones in said hole and we bang the plug in and that's it the retro bottom drain is good to go and ready to be fitted and getting in place um, what I did on this is it has a waterfall system that come, pumps up from the bottom and it has a little wow, that's a bit cool a little twister there so that you can reduce the, the flow to that one and have 50 50 to get the waterfall running again so basically I hope you can hear me basically it had cracked up here so I've used a special bit of my, my work glue and rebonded it back together and uh, jobs are good and no leaks waterfall works again and we're up and running so I'm just going to switch it off so obviously you can hear me because it is quite loud with the, the running sound of water all the fish in there are doing good wind is nice and clean so you can see in So we'll get this filled up then. Fingers crossed. It won't be too difficult and I won't spill it everywhere. So hopefully try to get this into a position where you can see what we're doing. Now this is the other part of it, so you could have it if you wanted to. You can have it so it comes out straight up, but I'm not so sure, I'm not so keen on this. I'd rather the low profile, less for them to bump myself on. And this piece sticking off or sticking up. You can either have it that way, or you can have it, sorry, you can either have it that way to the top of the bot, retro bottom drain and then a pipe coming out, or you can have it this way and it running straight across. Again, there's still a lot there and it's quite a chunky big piece in the bottom. I mean, it's no different to having a pump in your bottom of your pond anyway, if you like me guys, and you're pump fed, not uh, bottom drain fed. If that was the case and all bottom drain fed, I won't be fitting this. Um, <clears throat> so, we'll get it filled up. Again, bang all these bits out of the way to one side and we'll get this little piece filled up. And then, we're going to make this low profile kit. Hopefully, you should be able to see me filling that up there. This could be a long process. Let's see if we make that all just a little bigger. Too bad so far, and I'll fill that minute. Get rid of that. Give it a shake down.
Not as painful as I thought it were going to be. The odd minor spillage. But this, basically, this is the uh, just a bit of ballast for holding the bottom drain down to stop it from floating around on the bottom of the pond. Almost there. Hopefully you can still see me there. Make sure I'm still in shot. There we go, that's all that is. <coughs> and you have a little cap then, push inside the hole, cap it off. And that's it, it's filled up. That didn't uh, didn't take too long. I expect it to take a little bit longer. I've seen a few other people do that online and uh, doing it through funnels and everything else. So all I did there was just cut corner and bag off. But I mean, there's a, there's a fair bit of weight in there. I can't imagine that's going to float up. And I believe it does have a small little uh, breather hole there for it to allow it to fill with water. I would imagine if you wanted it to fill up a little bit quicker, you could pop this cap off. It would fill up sooner, faster, and then you get the rest of the uh, the water weight holding it down as well getting out the air that's inside there um all you need is a flat screwdriver i mean i've already put this in once and pulled it back out so i know it comes out relatively easy it's not you know not really easy to get out but you can get it out so now all we need to do now is make this bit let me get the pipe cutter and we'll uh, we'll get to it all right guys there we go there's a little piece of pipe into the elbow. Now, I can show you. There's one second. To make sure that I got it exactly the right length, I cut this pipe, dropped it in, pushed it over. Now, I think I'm going to solvent weld it. That way, then, this section piece is going to be a solid structure and then I don't have to worry about anything bumping into it too much or causing any problems but that bit just nips up on there and we're good to go right get back to you in a bit right guys what I've done I'm going to go pop out now pick up some more bits and bats that I need bits of pipe for the bigger pipe work that I need obviously now I've got my van back I can get some gear in um, but I've just done a quick test cut made this piece to go in here basically small section of pipe and just to just because I didn't have one an elbow or 45 I use a T that I still have trimmed it to size trimmed it to length bash that in there 
and that one can go into there. I know whether or not my pipes are the right size for the cuts that I can do. It's a bit nice. It's all been well in. And then it will come with the 45, section the pipe in, another 45, and that'll be my homemade, what do you call them? Low profile feed kit. So, stay with me a bit. Well, I'll pick up some materials. I might even take you along for the ride. But then we're going to be getting the rest of these into the drums, and hopefully, may and may possibly at some point through this day or today, get some kind of temporary system up and running so that I can test it with my original pump, if it's got enough oomph behind it to be able to push it and push the water up. But we'll see. See how it goes. I'll get back to you in a tick. Well, while I'm mid working on the pond, I thought I'd uh, give these guys a little bit of a treat as well. See what they think to a bit of watermelon. I've been watching them nudging it around a little bit. So they've had a little bit of a nibble on it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll enjoy that while I get cracked on with what I've got to do. Let's see how they do, see what they think of that. Hopefully, they'll enjoy it. Everybody's looking good. Yeah, right, let's get back to what we're doing. There we go, picked up a pipe work. Um, started to make a start on the Continuation for the oops, retro bottom drain. So what I did just before, I went to go get my parts, cut a few, put in there, and then we've got the uh, 45. If you have a look on the top there, it had a little bit of a sharp burr on it, so I've just tickled it back and sanded it off. I'll uh, warm that up with a heat gun, and that'll bring out these scratches, and it'll stop it from looking like a dull grey patch on it. So we've got that one on and then we've got the next section of pipe trimmed and cut so that will push into there and we can just make it a little easier, lift it up so I can get it in, Let's see if we can get it on camera for you. And we'll push that in there and then that down into there. Which gives us his drop, and then all we need is a small little 45 again on the bottom. Solvent well those together, and that gives us a low profile, so we don't have to have that big sharp protruding object off the top of here. Nothing sharp on the top of there then, nothing for them to glance themselves across. I mean obviously they'll be able to brush themselves against this if they want to do, but it's, there's nothing on this that is sharp, it's all rounded off, all nice and smooth. So we'll get this solvent welded up. And then all I will require is a piece of pipe, or we can take it over and offer it up to the end, see what it'll look like. Pop it down on the lawn. Piece of pipe in, then we can run that across the bottom of the pond. And then that can be brought up and out along the bottom length of the pond from the centre, elbow up from here, somewhere like that, I would have thought, elbow up and away to the filter system then. So that's that bit ready to go, ready to be glued in. What we need to do now is get a pump. I might actually try just trim this off and just run my other pump temporarily that's in there and connect it straight via a horsetail. I 
and just give it a test run, see how it is. Because at the end of the day, I can just trim that piece of pipe back off again. Once I've trimmed that piece of pipe back off again, I've got two or three small ones anyway, so we'll arm it to test it and try it. And we might be able to get some of the uh, filter system in and built. I've got to uh, open up the shed. Oh. And I've just walked all the way up here and I've left the keys. Hang on a second. <coughs> Grab the keys and I can turn my, uh, my conservatory back in from my workshop back into the uh, conservatory here. Start getting some back to normality. Looks like they've had a bit of a go at it. A couple of bits uh, transparent through, so they've had, they've had a go, which is good. Shed opened up, lights on. So now I've also just brought some silicon front van so I can seal this on the inside. But I'm going to get them welded up first, sealed up, welded up all my hunt joints, and then silicon it up grey on the inside and brown on the out. And then we start getting some holes drilled in these and getting those in. Uh, the reason why my neighbour got me a PTFP tip was he said he could get it in a pack of 10. I was going to just get a couple of rolls. He says I can get a whole pack of, pack of them for next to nothing. So, one pack of PTFP tip. Now I've got plenty I can put on. I'll bring these pipe joints down. So my elbows and bits and bats. And the pipe work, so we can start getting some of these drilled out. PTFE for the for wrapping around and making my seals because these all came without seals as well. I'm pretty sure they probably should have come with seals, but it's not going to stop us. We've got plenty of PTFE tape there that we can make them out of. So I'll be Making a start drilling some holes. Once I've got all these holes drilled, guys, I'll uh, let you see what's going on. Pipe work will be going in from here down to here, down to here, and then pipe work out down out the shed wall and back to the pond. Hopefully, to the pipe that I've got over there, we should have enough. <coughs> it's going to look different having a retro bottom draining bottom. It looks a little bit better having the. Uh, a sleeker profile on it now with the uh, it look pretty good. Right, so I'll make a start. If I catch them eating any of that melon, I'll try to see if I can get it on video for you. But you have been up at it, but it's obviously when you're not here. Never when you're pointing the camera at it. So we'll see. Hopefully when you get switched into it, switched onto it, I'll enjoy it. Right, get back to your tick. Right guys, just so you can see so far, just so you can see what we're up to, what I'm doing. First one is in and drilled, fastened in and bolted up, nipped up. Uh, don't know if you'll be able to see that on the inside, but we'll try to see if we can pan it over for you. There you go. So, first one's in, then we're going to come down to this one, and what I've done, PTFE tape, plenty of PTFE tape, so you can see the kind of the amount, you know, a nice good thick, good thick line of it, and then, if you look, when it goes in, it won't just go straight in, it needs to be kind of just wound in, so give it a little turn in, nut on the back, Hopefully I can reach this. Nut on the back and then the little grips there. Hold it on the outside and nip it up nice and tight. So, bear me one second because I need both hands to do that and I'll uh, show you when we're done. So there you go, you can see it on the inside there. 
that's going to be the flow in and the next thing to do then is a link pipe from this from this one down to this one so it'll be a small little elbows where they put them bag of elbows here oh wrong one 45 and another 45 for the returns I've got so a new bottle of uh, solvent well because this one is getting a little bit low so that's obviously not going to go in there bit of piece of pipe into there now and it'll come out little piece of pipe cut onto it drop it in come out that'll slide on this will then come down to this one, picked up again, little piece of pipe, touched in, job done. And then again, up to this one, it'll elbow back out, back down to this one, which will pick up again over this way. And then it'll be coming up here and to this side for the overflow, down to the bottom, elbow on, out the wall and back to the pond that's the plan that's the idea right so i'll get that cut get them in there and i'll let you see it again how about you a bit there we go guys can't believe it find me uh, uv's being back on up and running for three days and water's almost crystal clear again All looking good, all feeding well. There's a new one. Colours changing, gone nice and dark now. Maybe they're doing well. Nice to have uh, had a week, week off, week in the sun, and being able to enjoy them. Love that fish. Absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous blue, sky blue eyes, and it comes up to the surface. Yeah, thought I'd just show you with that. There we go, guys. Right. Slightly bigger hole saw from the one for the uh, inch and a half. Basically, just measured up a centimeter from that line. Find the drill in. Nice and steady. Drill it out. And then uh, remove the core plug from the inside of the drill. One more to go in, but this time it will be round the side. So I'm going to spin this barrel round, mark that one up and get that one placed in. That's in a tick. Hi, so guys, I uh, thought I'd let you have a look. See what stage we're up to now. A bit of a difference, a bit of a change. All of them at present are just um, dry fit, nothing's plumbed in yet. And the reason being is I still have the, the feed to fit in and drill in down there. So I'm going to need to take this, this butt out so that I can put a, a feed supply in down here. That will come in through that wall through that wall and then into there the bulkhead um, so it'll come in fill up in the static bed overflow into this one down into the moving bed overflow down into this one which I'm going to have of some kind of biological mechanical polishing kind of and then, yeah, never mind what's going in there yet, or whether it's going to be one or the other. But obviously, you get the gist. In, flow up, in, flow up, in, flow up into this one, and then returning. Now, at the moment, I haven't done this one yet. Pipe there, and now I need to drill a hole through this wall so that I can take the pipe out, and then I can use the remaining one on the far left hand side there to 
come down here, tee off, and then continue down there to go into that bit. And I have one little off cut left over. I might have to get another length if I do, it's not a big deal. But there we go, there's a filter system. Now the only things that I need outstanding so that I can get this all up and completed is some uh, little cages to go on the inside of these. Inside, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. No, probably not. Uh, cages to go on the inside to stop the media from being able to fall and rattle through. And then end up going down through the, the filter system and returning to the pond. So I'm going to need one cage for there. One, two, three, four cages, five cages, and then the the smaller cage into where it actually feeds in, just to stop anything from being able to backflow when I switch down or shut off. So, after a little bit of a clean and a tidy, a bit of a sweep out, that's the filter system. Let me pop this lid back on and you can see it all from a, a distance shot. So the waste will go out the back wall and the floor will return in and the in inlet will be coming in down there. Just a couple more holes to drill and then wait for my pump to arrive. Once the pump's arrived the retro bottom drain which is already good to go with the uh, homemade loading kit on it. Again, I'm going to just sort this out, I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to warm it with a blowtorch. I should take that grey looking scratch off by bringing the pigment back up in the, the plastic to the top. Just give it a quick uh, flick over with a flame. And that should make that look right here. A little bit better than it was. So, at least it won't have any sharp edges where I've done a little bit of a sanding so they won't be able to rub or abrade themselves on it in any way, shape or form. <coughs> so that then leaves me with, I'll be using the majority of this pipe in the bottom of the pond, trim off to come up and out and then this secondary pipe will be then going up to the side of the shed to uh, into the filter house and then this one and this little bit that I've got left here that'll be going through the shed wall and then an elbow again and then a return back so that's it all I need now is my pump my aerator and we're good to go filter system done. I haven't done so much on the watermelon. You can see where they've had a bit of a nibble on it. Taking a few holes through. Not a great deal though. But uh, yeah, the pot is looking nice and clear though now. Now my uh, ultraviolet's kicking back in. But the main thing, the main problem I've got now is the ultraviolet that's on this system. Is going to be too small. It'll be too much of a too much of a restriction. And obviously, with the pond going bigger at some point, I'm going to have to uh, get a bigger one. So, guys, let me know what you think. So far, so good. I think I'm pretty impressed with it. To say it's just a few cheap water butts that's going to make a nice barrel system. Fingers crossed. It'll do the job. It certainly can't be worse than what I've got, as it's three times the, the filtration. And whilst I've got this one up and running, well, well, sorry, once I've got this one up and running, I can then decommission this one. So I can leave this filter system up and running till the very last minute, and then just transfer the media over from what's in there to the last barrel with my polishing pads on the top, and then. I might be going for the jack matting and a moving bed in the middle. I might go with the jack matting, I don't know. Uh, let me know. Stick your uh, comments down in the uh, section below. Let me know what you think. Jack matting for a static bed. 
uh, and then to a moving bed with something like K1 Media or slightly bigger, bigger stuff. I don't know if the bigger stuff's better, the, the Burton stuff. I think there's slightly bigger sort of, you know, diameter rather than micro stuff. Uh, and then obviously, last stage, let me know what you think. I'm open to suggestions. Otherwise, I'll just go with my own plans, but let's see. Anyway, that's the build. So far, so good. Need to get my pump ordered. Hopefully I can get it on the next day delivery. And then I'm going to need uh, an air pump because the little one that I've got just, just here at present, let me just, the little one that I've got just here, it's, it's, not, it's not powerful enough to do the, you know, boiling up of medias in this, but I'm going to need to get something of an half decent quality one if I'm going to put some oxygen and boil these up and boil this one up. This one won't have any in, but if it's going to have a static bed and a moving bed, obviously the moving bed's going to need to go all the time. The static bed's going to need to be boiled up to clean, and then I'll be able to uh, open my gate valves, flush it away, open this gate valve, flush it away, open this gate valve, and flush that one away, making sure that I can get any of the crud that's in the bottom soaked up, cleaned up and away. Hopefully it'll work. Looks, in my opinion, pretty decent. Let me know what you think, guys. So then, guys, usual thing. If you like what you've seen, want any information on it, feel free to contact me. If you're enjoying the content, please do me a huge favour, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. Till usual, you know, keep smiling, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for all the new subscribers. Appreciate it, very much so. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See you soon.